is good. What's going on? And welcome to another video. I'm currently with Chad and Oliver, and we are in Namaqualand. We've got about an hour to go to our next journey. We just stopped for some fuel. Sun's just about to go down, and we're going to be in Namaqualand for the next couple of days, targeting some really specific species, and hopefully, we're going to come right. But we just stopped for fuel, so I'm just flipping a few rocks, but bugs. I will catch up with you when you get to our destination. Welcome to day two. We had a bit of a rough time getting here. We had to drive about three hours around the way. But we are in a section of the, the Makulan National Park. Coastal section, as you can see, we're right here by the beach. And we're going to be flipping some rocks, digging under some bushes, and looking for some fossorial lizards. So hopefully we're going to get what we came for. But if not, it's a pretty fantastic area to be in. No, it didn't take long. We got our first reptile of the trip. This is just a young, very good skink. See, not a very big skink. Chad, with his great skills, helped me catch it along having a little sucker. Thank you, Lepers, very good. Awesome. So, this is the dwarf coastal legless skink, Acontia littoralis. I just have to do a voiceover because I incorrectly ID'd it when Oliver just scooped it up from this bit of detritus on the dunes here. Um, you can see now the mist is really was really starting to roll in. And conditions weren't ideal, but unfortunately, this is not the animal we're looking for. So, we'll carry on looking. Well, it's been fairly slow, but check this out. This is Typhlosaurus vermis. It is actually a member of the... Oops, there you go. It's a member of the same genus of the animal that we're trying to find. But, just give me a little nip there. But it is unfortunately not the species we're looking for. I found these guys quite a lot. On yeah, numerous times up in the macro land. So not what we're looking for. So he can essentially go back, and as you guys know, they the soil. So he'll dig in the sand, and off he goes. I just was scratching at the bottom of the bush. Contius littoralis, which is the coastal dwarf burrowing skink, or coastal dwarf skink, or something like that. Um, Acontius littoralis, not, again, not the species we're looking for. So this guy can go back into the sand, you'll watch them sort of disappear. Incredible how quickly they move and they just disappear. So here's our main target for this weekend. This is the Namakokako, Kako sternum namakwensi. It's probably about six degrees Celsius tonight. And these little frogs are just sitting out right in the open. There's another one right there. I just spooked him. Um, but have a look at all the life in these pools. It's absolutely insane. So we're just making our way around this little artificial dam. And that is a Namakokako egg mass. There's one there. There's one next to a dead bee. That's obviously had the eggs. Um, well, has the tadpoles emerged. I'll try zoom in. Let's see. Yeah, you can actually see them really nicely like that. You can see them all just wiggling around and within a couple days they'll sort of get out of there and then they'll continue their lives. Let's see if we can't find a couple more calling males to show you guys. So I'm still on the hunt for more frogs and I just pulled back this little bush and look we've got one. Another one just going under there. Let me grab them for some photos quick. Good morning. It is frigidly cold this morning. Oh, let's not do that, but have a look at the roof of Chad's car. It's frost, and we were out last night till the crazy hours of the morning photographing frogs calling in weather like this. It's ridiculous. But we're packing up this morning, and we're going to get going and hopefully go find some lizards. So 
So we just decided to come back out to where we were last night and we got a couple of macro cactus again. Just a recess little one. But you'll see there's another one just to the left. It is probably about below 10 degrees Celsius. There was frost on the ground and these frogs are calling. So after a lot of broken Afrikaans between Oliver, Chad and myself, we got access to this farm. We got our first herb. It's a little Bibron's gecko. It's quite a common species that we see all over the Western Cape. We are now in the Northern Cape, but not what we're looking for, so we're going to carry on. Just a nice full body shot of that. Bibron's gecko. Really common gecko. One of the larger body geckos that we see up here in the Macaland. He's also had a previous run in. The regrowing tail. You can see. How it goes, that skin and skin, the big tubercles, the body and the face, the big head that will give you quite a unpleasant bite if it shows. So I just flipped this big piece of rock on this big rock sheet. Not what we are looking for, but an exceptionally gorgeous lizard. This is Piers' girdle lizard, Namazurus Piersii, and it's only the second specimen that I've ever seen of the species. So they've got a beautiful spinose tail, really flat looking head and you can see how just how spinose the flanks are and the only part of the body that's sort of soft is the belly. Beautiful lizard, not what we're looking for but I'll certainly get some photographs of this lizard. I can go back under his crevice. Searching this beautiful habitat here in the Macquarland. Plant diversity is incredible here, as of the reptile diversity. I'm going to make my way over to those sort of ridges and cliffs there, and I'm going to get after it. While the search continues, I just picked up this really beautiful looking Weber's gecko, Pachydactylus weberi. I've seen a couple of little ones, but they just managed to sneak into the rock crevices. So I got this nice, decent sized one. Nothing special, very common gecko. Calm down, brother. Very common gecko in these parts, but beautiful none the same. So we'll get a couple of photographs of him and just let him go. So I got overly excited and I thought we had our species, but this is just a young crew girdle lizard, Curiosaurus polyzonus. So we have found two other species of sort of Acropius lizards. We just need to crack the code for this one, which is probably one of the most undersampled and rarely seen girdle lizards in Southern Africa. So we're just gonna keep on going. And here's just as flipped under this tiny little rock. We've got a beautiful Weber's gecko. It's a lot more colorful than the previous individual, oh, but you can see that he's really skittish and he's just gonna find the next little rock flake to go under and zip on out of here. Weber's gecko, Pachydactylus webri. In a good couple of months, maybe not years, Absolutely gorgeous little frog. You can actually hear, I don't know if you can, there's a stream running just along the way there. So he's probably just hiding out here, get rid of the cold, but yeah, I'll snap some photos. I'll take him up to Oliver. I'll get Oliver to come have a look. And we can carry on with our search. Holy gosh. You guys can't see what I've got yet, but have a look at this. This is Nicrus tessellata. These things are absolutely incredible. They have to be one of the most beautiful lizards in Southern Africa. You can see he's got the black and white stripes on the body. He's got this bright, bright red tail, which is anywhere from two and a half times the length of the actual body of the animal. Let me just get my glove off and give you guys a better look. Here's just a better look of this Western Sandbelt lizard, just in hand. Have a look at that tail. Some of you guys may be familiar with other species of Nucris that have suddenly been appearing in a lot of exotic reptile trading websites. Um, they're all illegally exported outside of South Africa. They are caught in the wild by just people that are desperate for money. A lot of young herpers are supplying unscrupulous reptile breeders and they're shipping them to the US, which is quite sad as these animals are actually all protected, the entire genus. So. We really have to do something about this reptile poaching that's so blatant. But 
These animals are absolutely stunning. I'm going to get some photographs of it and I'll give you a little bit of a better look once I photographed it in case it gets away. So here's this new Chris again. Just put him out here and we're actually going to release him so he'll probably zoot off. Or he might just sit and do nothing, which he's doing. Holy crap, holy crap, you won't believe this. Look at this. I don't know if you can see it yet. I just flipped and a spit lapse. I just flipped, flipped a Cape Coral snake under this big sheet of rock. It's an absolute monster of a specimen. Have a look at that. These snakes are in lapids, so they are venomous, um, dangerously so. Not considered lethal, but let me pull him out and I'll give you guys a good look before he scoots on out of here. Here we go, he's pretty much fully exposed. He's an absolute tank of a specimen. I have not seen a big Cape Coral snake like this in a very, very long time. Um, you can see he's obviously just been living in this little burrow here. But he's going to be exceptionally cold, so let me just hook him out. Here's Chad photographing the Cape Coral snake that I just flipped under that rock. Here it is, hissing there. Not too stoked with being photographed. So, although he is sitting quite nicely, so Chad should be able to get some photos. But see, as soon as I move my hand off screen, he just stays straight on here. You can see uh, that upturned rostral skin on the front, strong bands on the throat, and these bands go all the way along the ventral side too. He is super upset. Calm down, I'm just busy photographing it, but you can see how quickly they keep attention. You can hear hissing, it's just transfixed on my hand here. Yeah. Give you a bit of a background. It's really easy snakes to photograph, they don't try to get away, they just stick up and hood like this. Let's get that smooth in here. Yeah, we're just releasing this Cape Coral Snake, Spitalaps Lubricus, we just get out the bag. There he goes. Oh, that was an easy release. He's gone right under the rock. Good release and fantastic little mission on this copy here. Just giving you guys a walkthrough of this habitat. I'm absolutely fizzing after getting that coral snake. It is actually the, I'm just looking around crevices where we go. It's actually the first coral snake that I've ever flipped. All the others have just been road cruising. So it's super unusual to flip your lapids like that. But I'm needing to get hold of Chad and Oliver. We need to meet up and I need to see what they found. Photograph some animals and get on out of here. So Chad just picked up another species for our trip. Whoa, welcome back. That I almost just lost. This is Pachydactylus Lumbrensky. It's one of the largest members of the Pachydactylus genus. You can see how different it is compared to Lubrum's gecko. It's got that smooth skin. It's not heavily tuned built. Except this poor guy has lost his tail at some point, so it doesn't look his best. But Chad is obviously just finding us animals that aren't in their prime, which is a good. Have you ever made a mistake like Chad where you're driving on a dirt road that's rutted as anything? And these things, I'm gonna open a little bottle of Coca-Cola. And as you can see, it's now all over his pants and his shirt. But Chad has had a great day because we've got a coral snake. That's a good day. Very good day. <laughs>